keep them closed. Wow, that guy is handsome. All right, go ahead and open. <sighs> your cheek and your chin are like the <laughs> same in, thing. He's in ninth grade. It's like, <laughs> there is no chin, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Why did he, you have he a beard? Just, he has the double chin. Oh, you, know, <laughs> <laughs> you can't just like say exactly how you feel all the time, right? When you do keep things bottled up, it can kind of manifest into something that you wouldn't expect. Like in like, like being able to shoot shoot a load of cum across the room oh. at a voracious speed. Yeah, yeah. Because that's Keep what I'm thinking. Like bottled, bottled up. up. Are you guys thinking the same thing, or is yeah. it just me being weird? No, I that's thought about that immediately. Yeah, really? bottled up. It's like it just hits the ceiling. There's definitely a connection between uh, you know how we feel physically and the way that we act mentally and the way that we act physically. Uh, the way that you walk into a room, the way that you present yourself. Especially, I've talked about like my last relationship. I kept a lot of things to myself because I knew if I said certain things, there'd be absolute blow up of conflict. You know, you're walking on the eggshells. So what did I do? I just went to the gym. Everything kind of comes back to this idea of like being able to exercise and having a strong capacity. The stronger your capacity is, the harder it should be to move you uh, one direction or another with your equanimity, which is just kind of having a... I guess I'd say like a bandwidth for your temperament. Like it should be able to be moved up and down a little bit without you overreacting. There's obviously many physical benefits to jumping into a cold plunge. But the thing that put me over the edge after we had Ryan Dewey on was like talking about like all the mental side of things. I am so grateful for it because like I never thought I would be doing this mm -hmm. and I am reaping so many amazing benefits within the first week. After I got out of it the first time, it was amazing. He said the same thing about anal. Remember that? Yes, actually. I. All right, fine. I'll admit it. I did say that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gosh, you guys just put me on blast every time. It's okay. <laughs> Power Project family, how's it going? This episode is brought to you by Vivo Barefoot Shoes. These shoes we've been wearing for almost a year now, and we love them because they, they're great for our feet. Wide toe box, minimal shoe, they're flexible, but they also don't look like shit. <laughs> Most, a lot of barefoot shoes, when you see them and you put them on, you're actually asking for people to make fun of you. But <laughs> <laughs> these shoes actually look really fucking good. Yes, dude, they look good. No one's going to make fun of you. And you don't even need a man bun to wear these shoes. <laughs> you can just put them on inside the gym, outside of the gym. You're going to look good. You're going to feel good. And your feet are going to get stronger. You guys got to head over to VivoBarefoot.com and at checkout, enter promo code POWERPROJECT to save 20% off your entire order. Again, VivoBarefoot.com, promo code POWERPROJECT, 20% off. Links to them down in the description as well as the podcast show notes. Who are you? What <laughs> <laughs> the fuck do That's, you think you're doing, eh? I, yeah, was that Scottish, maybe? I'm trying to go to the Scottish. I thought it was It's funny when you go to do an accent and you turn into something totally different. <laughs> yeah. oh, turn yeah. like a, sound like a vampire or something weird. You oh. do this. And Simo, what happened to your shirt? Rate my Scottish accent one out of ten. <laughs> is, it, is it good? <laughs> is, it, is it good, Andrew? It's, I'm just trying to go. It's not because if, if, if because if not, it almost turns Jamaican. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I ain't even gonna try that shit. I'm gonna embarrass myself. It's hard, but it rained, man. I know it rained. <laughs> what happened right before that, though? Yeah, we were going on a on a nice walk, and Andrew Andrew was like wearing a sweatshirt. Being responsible. A little bit. It was a little bit nippy. I was like, hmm, that seems reasonable. But Mark. Mark was like, nah, dude, take that off. It's sunny. You're going to start sweating. I like hockey jerseyed him. I pulled it right off him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Threat Andrew threatened his life. Andrew was like, you know what? I trust you, Mark. You've never led me astray. <laughs> you know, you're now he knows different. <laughs> <laughs> and in the middle of the walk, it fucking rains. It didn't just rain. It was windy. And it never rains here. <laughs> it's like a drought every year. Oh, my God. The sun was out. And the next thing you know, we're at the furthest part of our walk. We're like just before halfway. So it's like. If we turn it around, it would be almost as long, but to finish it, we're going to have to walk a little bit further, yep. and then it came down. It nailed it. Booyah. And Zima did a fadeaway and went straight into the trash can. But dog, it, it, that's so funny it's because like- freaking It's freaking simulation. It's not raining right now. Mm. It, st it stopped raining as we started to approach after the run because we were running from the rain. We had to run from the rain. So I was just like, you know what? Andrew chose not to wear a sweater. Let's just rain on them right now. <laughs> Let's rain on all of them right now. Not only were we running, we were screaming. So. <laughs> it was, like the rain was going to really kill bad. us. But it's kind of fun. Oh, and it was fantastic. Yeah. 
Fuck when was the last time you guys ran in the rain? Shame. I mean, mm-hmm. I know, Mark, you've been doing it quite a bit because well, rain, I've been running, yeah, rain or shine. Yeah, it doesn't usually rain. Like, it, it's only rained a couple times. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, but not like that. That was actually good. Yeah. It, like, hailed for a second there because it was hurting. <laughs> no, I got hit by something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pull up this uh, amazing <laughs> video of me and Jesse Burdick doing our mobility walk right, work on. on the pavement. And apologies for those on the audio side, but this will be fun. You to have to watch to. this. But in Seema, I want you to close your eyes because I'm going to pull it up. Mm-hmm. And then, all right, don't keep them closed. Keep them closed. Keep them closed. Keep them closed. Wow, that guy is handsome. All right, go ahead and open. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> Dude, how old were you here? God. 18. <laughs> <laughs> your cheek and your chin are like the he's same in, thing. He's in ninth grade. It's like, there is no chin, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you, you have he a just, beard? He has the double chin. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> the hat is being like pushed off my head too. My head's so fat. The hat's like hanging on for dear life. <laughs> your mouth is so small. <laughs> your mouth is so tiny compared to the rest of oh, your yeah, face. Yeah, look at the size of those cheeks. <laughs> What size shirts were you wearing oh back God. then? Well, that's got to be at least a three or four. Yeah, X. that's wow. great. But the information's still good, and you gotta, you gotta, you'll die when you see the shorts that I'm wearing. They're giant. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> those and ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Shorts. It's gonna be great. It's eleven but, years ago, by the way. Yeah. But also, Jesse Burdick looks like he's ten, like for reals. Action! Action! Leopard series number two. We're at, we are at the. Uh, wow. Lumiere. Theater or Lumiere, it's very famous French cinema photographers. They invented film, I guess. <laughs> I don't even know what's going on. We're at a, another premiere of Bigger, Stronger, Faster. I don't know why the movie's very old, but <laughs> we are doing a uh, mobility wad stretch again. You can barely see my Me eyes. Me and Jesse Burdick here are taking over the mobility wad once again. Jesse looks Jesse good Burdick though. He looks so young. Know, he's yeah. A super friend. So he's going to super. You, you look good too, Mark. You Thank you. You're out. welcome. So what we're doing here, we're in the streets of San Francisco for the Mobility Wad. We're going to do a quad PNF rear stretch for your quad. So what we're going to do is we're going to have Spelly come on over here because he's tight through his quad. I've been messing with this stuff for a long time. 11 and a half years ago. Whoa. San Francisco is terrible. Oh, bro, these shorts, though. Wow. Whoa, he's getting very personal. He's getting up in there. Look at that mobility. It's unbelievable. <laughs> what is wrong with us? This is like Titanic. Did, one, did you say that, Andrew? No. This reminds me of Titanic. The Titanic meme? Yeah. So what that's going to do is that's going to help stretch out the quad and the hip flexor for both Smelly and myself. We're benchers trying to get it for the shakedown. Oh, man. Mobilitywad.com. Thank you. Okay, I, I have a question for you, Mark. At that point in <laughs> yes, time... Yes, I've always been handsome. That, mm-hmm. So yeah, you've definitely always been handsome. Were you able to see your penis while looking down at that point I in time? I was, but okay. you know, it got to be difficult after a while. <laughs> my stomach, you know, my stomach was never like, even though I'm fat as hell, like I think my stomach like uh, circumference in the front was never like... Never crazy. Cra- never crazy. I never had like a distended uh, belly. So yeah, it made it more challenging though. Okay, okay. I had to like look, look. You know, yeah. what I mean, I had to like not just like look down. I had to like kind of <laughs> search around. Yeah, 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 yeah. There, yeah. yeah. there we go. All right, I kind of saw it. I think it counts. Man, yeah. That was, that yeah was look, a... When was? Let's see. When was this posted? I, I hate that I can't see sometimes. You said eleven years ago, right? Mm-hmm. So it was twenty eleven. Yeah, eleven years ago. I just graduated high school. So dang. Twenty ten. One year into the slingshot. Wow. Mm-hmm. Damn. Okay. Yeah, one, one year of slingshot and a couple of years of, you know, the greatest thing about that is that we like felt the need to film that. That's, mm-hmm. that's the coolest part. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And that was before YouTube was like popping, popping. Yeah. So. We're like, this is important to get to the world. Uh, were, how, how much were you 330 there? Or was that like 
Were you still climbing? I, I look pretty maxed out right there. I don't know. Yeah, I'm probably mm. at least over three hundred pounds. There. Definitely over three hundred pounds. Yeah, three thirty was like you know I think I was like three thirty for like a day or two. Okay, you know I think that was my heaviest heaviest. Yeah, but I don't know what I weighed there, but it was definitely heavy, oh. definitely rotund. It made wow. throwing around big weights a lot easier. I know that. Shit. April fourteenth, two thousand eleven mm. was when it was posted. Four one four. Wow. Wow. You definitely, uh, the calves were there. Hey, at least Actually. I had something going on. And the shins looked like they were kind of bloody. So you oh, were yeah. definitely deadlifting a fuck ton. So, <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. I could lift some stuff back then, but yeah, I couldn't really do much else other than like just kind of marshmallow my way around. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, we had the other day, um, uh, the other day Matt was uh, doing some squats, mm-hmm. baby fat, yeah, which yeah. is the greatest nickname of all time, I think. <laughs> Baby fat was popping out some squats and my brother's like, my God, your mobility's so good. He's just doing these squats flawless and he's knocking out reps with 500 pounds. Damn. And of course I got to hate him. I got to hate on yeah. him, right? Just because like I'm jealous of the way that he's squatting and he's handling, manhandling this weight. Does he mm-hmm. still have a really good mustache? <laughs> uh, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. He built out a hell of a mustache. Yeah. He's got it all. But I said, well, of course he's flexible. So is a marshmallow when you roast it over Aww. fire. <laughs> <laughs> and Matt just turned around after his set and just gave me a fist bump. He's like, he goes, that was worth it. He's like, yeah. that was good. You know, sometimes, you know, I was like biting my tongue, but I'm like, <laughs> I was like, he needs to hear this. This is too funny. The crazy thing though is like, yeah, he moves really well. Like, he does. He, he's heavier right now, but he his mobility is there. Like his squat looks comfortable. He moves well, so... Whenever he decides to, you know, shift, he's still going to be moving really well. We got a couple guys in the gym that squat really well. Our boy John, he moves really well when he's squatting. <clears throat> mm-hmm. He's fucking, he is a tank. Those big guys oh, squats. yes, John. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to say his last name. Yeah, it's, I uh, couldn't tell you. Me neither. Hmm. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, you know what? In watching some of these old videos that pop up here and there, you know, sometimes things pop up in your phone is like, you know, old pictures or whatever. Yep. That pop up. And uh, sometimes you need to change that shit. Yeah. You're sometimes like, you need to go through your camera roll and take some shit out. Just delete. Yeah. But yeah. And delete it everywhere. Mm. Oh my God. Cause it's never really, <clears throat> it's not really fully deleted, right? It's never, yeah. You got, you need to go into your, into your deleted folder and then delete it there. And then you need to go on your laptop and make sure it's not there anymore either. You got to, really somebody can probably up. still find some of it mm-hmm. somehow, Absolutely. right? Yeah. yeah. But what I've noticed in some of these videos, like there was a video that popped up. There was a picture with me and Rich Piana. And then I was like, oh, I, I barely remember meeting him. I know that I met him more than once. Um, so then I was like, let me find the video. So I found a video and I was like, I got the worst. <laughs> I have, and you guys are going to laugh because you guys are aware of this. I have the worst poker face. Like I am not good at like hiding stuff. Like when somebody says something to me, I'm not good at like reacting to it like, Sometimes, like, if somebody says something that normally would hit somebody, like, real emotionally, then I'm I'm not bad with that stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But if it's something I don't want to do, I don't, like, hide it very well. So, Rich Pian and I are talking, and he's like, you should come out and meet me in Vegas or something. And, like, oh I'm like, yeah. But, like, the face that I make is, like, really, like, no. I was there. <laughs> and, yeah. I, I filmed it. <laughs> yeah. So, like, I have all this stuff, like, <laughs> bottled up that I just don't say a lot of times. I'm kind of guarded with it, but I'm like, man, my face says it all. Like, so even if I think I'm hiding certain things from people, I'm not doing a very good job of it. Yeah, it yeah. was like that quiet, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah your voice changes. Yeah. Your inflection. All right. Well, yeah. All right, well, like, do you want to schedule it? Yeah, yeah, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Like, oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah let's be, do it. <laughs> yeah, why does your voice change so much? I do that shit all the time. My voice goes <laughs> up here. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah it's <clears throat> or you say like probably yeah i'll probably see you tomorrow uh-huh. this means like, there's no shot you are not seeing me tomorrow oh man see you tomorrow at 10 maybe hey see you guys tomorrow at 10 like yes that'll happen possibly oh uh, why not just say no i don't why know. not no why not yeah just i don't say know that, you know sometimes you don't want to like dash somebody's somebody's <laughs> potential you know hand or anything but yeah but imagine if he's like hey come out to vegas and and meet up with me <laughs> no <laughs> No, and no explanation. <laughs> You're just like okay, like I'm good. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it's just because it 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 gets rid of the conversation right now. Like it gets you out of it, and then you can maybe make some shit up later or whatever. But I yeah. think that's why, because like yeah, like. If in SEMA, you're like, hey, do you come over to dinner tonight at eight o'clock or something? I'd be like, you understand this, but like, if you didn't know this, that that's like really late for me. I'm like, yeah, maybe. 
because if I say like, no, you're going to be like, what, what do you mean? You know? So I think it just helps you avoid that awkward conversation of like, thanks for the invite, but I do not want to go to dinner tonight. You guys ever com- completely lie? Somebody asks you how something's going <laughs> and it's not even going on anymore. Or that person's not even in your life anymore. Like, oh, how's it going with so-and-so? And like, you're not even dating her anymore. Mm-hmm. And you're like, good. <laughs> just because just you're get like out you're, of it. first of all you're a little thrown off and you're like i don't know how to answer that question like we're not together anymore and you don't want to go into it's a lot of explanation so yeah i'm just gonna be like good <laughs> okay cool yeah 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 I've done and then, you're, then you're kind of like i think i just completely lied to that person <laughs> <laughs> like not only is it not going good but we're not even together anymore <laughs> oh man no I, I don't think i've done that with the relationship stuff um I've done that with sometimes with like business stuff where like oh, I may yeah. have started something and I don't do it anymore or something mm-hmm. like, yeah, how's that going? Like, it's good. It's going great. You know, might as well avoid the conversation altogether by yeah. just saying it's going great. But then if they dig, if they're like, oh, tell me about yeah. that. It's like, ah, oh, well, mm, sorry. <laughs> yeah, now you're really, you. yeah, you're really caught up in something. I didn't even know we were going to be talking about this shit, but you know what I really fucking suck with? Um, do you know those people who are like, uh, in front of stores or when you go to malls and oh, they're like oh, yeah. kiosks and they try to call you over. Ah, oh, man, I'm so bad. Like, like if somebody stops me, is like, hi, and I accidentally make eye contact. I can't act like I didn't hear him. If I make eye contact, then I'm just like, you like trying hi. to pretend you're interested in what they're trying to sell you on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nope. Yeah. 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 I, I'm so bad at just being like, I got to go. <laughs> yeah, what are you supposed to do in that situation? You go, you ignore, like you don't ignore, but you just, you know, you got to do the, mm. Mm. You know, I wonder if you could just be like, "Hey, I'm gonna give you 20 bucks." <laughs> it just sh- yeah. Hopefully, it goes towards something cool. But I gotta go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Girl Scouts are the worst. Yeah. Because when it's children, oh. when it's children, well, that's why they do that shit. Yeah. You, you just gotta, you just gotta buy a package. They shouldn't even allow children to do that. <laughs> Solicit shouldn't. you on the street corner. It's like, come on, yeah, <laughs> leave me alone. <laughs> yeah, my wife's the same way though. Like, she will listen to. I'm like, nope. I'm like, hey, we're still just keep pushing. Just keep pushing. I'm like, because what all I do is just like, oh, sorry. No, thanks. Like, I don't even know what they have to say. Yeah. I just, they're like, yeah. And usually that, that, that works because I'm like trying to juggernaut things. You know, I'm just like mm. not slowing down. Like, I don't yeah. pause or nothing. I'm like, sorry, no, thanks. And just I've gotten straight bit, forward. I've gotten a bit better at that over the years. But uh, there's still a little, there's still a bit of that there. Where I'm just like, yeah. oh, I made eye contact. Well, let's, let's see what this is. And uh-huh. then when you're done with the whole thing. I'll say thank you and no, and then I'll keep on my way. Mm-hmm. But at least I wasted your time because I gave you. It. <laughs> I, I realized how practice. fucked up it is because they weren't going to get a yes. Yeah, but I just I put their hopes up because I stopped. Mm. It's harsh. It's harsh. It's not easy. Mm-hmm. I think I you know bottled a lot of stuff up. And like I don't always say exactly what what's on my mind, but I think it's important though. Sometimes, right? Like you can't just like let everything fly all the time. You can't just like say exactly how you feel all the time, right? Dog, no. I don't know. I mean, I don't think that's it. Personally, for me, I've never found that to be uh, the best idea immediately, at mm-hmm. least. I find it better to, if I, if something's really going on, like, I find it better to just think a little bit. Mm-hmm. And I know it can sometimes be frustrating <laughs> if you're with somebody because they want to know, but it's just like, let, 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 let me let my mind go over this so I can figure out if this <laughs> right. is stupid or not first. And then and then we can we can come to it. Yeah, you know, then normally you can communicate way better. And you yeah. can say, hey, I don't know what happened, but like for some reason I feel hurt or threatened and this is what happened. And maybe I'm an idiot for that, but I somehow am insulted by what happened, you know, and then you can kind of talk through it. But when in the moment, you just be like, I'm mad. Yeah. <laughs> and you don't really have any way to communicate it. And men, a lot of times we just get like quiet and then we, we just grumble and make noise and then we kind of walk away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cause if you let, if you let frustration do the talking for you, you're going to, you might say some shit. I mean, you feel it and it still fits what's bothering you, but you might kind of go a little bit over the top and then like, that's just not going to help anything. Yeah. It's going to make it worse. If what anything. about, what about at like a restaurant? Like, is everything going okay here? Everything tastes good. And like something's wrong. Like, you ordered steak and you got chicken instead or something. And it's like, it just depends how wrong it is. Cause like, yeah. it, you know, like with my wife, she has a gluten intolerance. Mm. So like, we can't like really like, can't risk that. One. Like, like if I just want to go low carb and they bring the bun, you know, like on a hamburger or something, it's like, Oh yeah, uh, everything. go oh, cool. Yeah. no, nope, Everything's great. And I just take the bun off for her. She wouldn't be able to do that. So it's like in that case, it's just like, ah, sorry. Yeah. I asked, you know, for gluten-free or whatever it is, you know, and it's like, oh, sorry, my bad. 
But yeah, I don't know. I mean, that's, you don't want to fuck with people that prepare your food, <laughs> mm. but also you have to, like, I didn't want the chicken. <laughs> yeah. I think being overly nice can work really well. Mm -hmm. If you come from, like, if you say it <clears throat> in a way that can like be more on their side, say, Hey, I, I might've miscommunicated. I, I was, I was trying to order like tri tip and I ended up with chicken, but I might've said the wrong thing. Is there a way you can re replace it or something? A lot of mm -hmm. times they'll be like, oh my God. And they'll just like leave the chicken there too. That's how I've gotten two meals yeah. so many times. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like just being overly nice sometimes works, but sometimes in the heat of the moment, it's not easy to like, when you say something, you sometimes say it and you're like, that didn't sound good. That sounded mm -hmm. rude. Even though all you were pointing out is what you want. But sometimes pointing out what you want can sound kind of rude. Dude, I can't stand people who are like rude mm. to people in yeah. service. I, I hate that people. myself. Because yeah. like, like, okay, if somebody got something wrong, cool. You can, you can, you can let them know. But people, I've seen this so much. People who are like mean to people and like people that are waiting on them or people in grocery stores or whatever. It's just like, dog, you, you really have nothing better to do <laughs> than just be mean to this individual who has to deal with so many fucking people. You know what I mean? Like, just be nice to them. You know, maybe they're having a hard day too. Be mm. nice. You might be able to get two meals out of it. Well, and who knows what happened? I mean, maybe they literally just gave you a dish that was meant for a guy sitting in a similar seat just at a different table. Yeah. And they just mixed it up. I mean, it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And then so you get all pissed off. You know, hey, I've been waiting over an hour and this, I ordered something totally different. This is, this is not even wrong. This is not even right. The appetizers were cold and you're just like, Man, like this person is really just flaming the fuck out of this mm -hmm. person. Like, it, mm. I just don't think it's helpful. I do think that, like, if you really did have some sort of issue, maybe when you're done, which I would never even do any of this, but like, maybe when mm. you're done, you communicate with somebody, say, "Hey, I own a business too, and I just want to let you know, you guys fucking suck." No, <laughs> <laughs> I just want to let you know, like, a couple things got misarranged, and yeah, yeah, yeah. a couple people got some orders that weren't correct, and I just wanted to communicate that to you just so you kind of know, like, I don't know if it's, you know, who it's coming from or what happened, but it's my second time coming here. And last time a couple things were off a little bit too. Mm. I like this place. Things taste really good. So maybe you can not fuck up so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like, I, I just don't, I don't, li I don't even like getting into those conversations, but that would be really helpful. Mm -hmm. Like if someone had a problem here and they said, um, you know, if they got the wrong size slingshot or whatever it is, I would love to be able to solve that problem for somebody. But if they just say, if I ask how something's doing or they get an email back from us saying, hey, curious on how that last order went for you, and you say it's good, but it wasn't good, then I don't know how to help. Yeah, but bottling things up, though, can, I mean, it seems, and I'm, again, going back to this uh, John Sarno book, that when you do keep things bottled up, it can kind of manifest into something that you wouldn't expect. Like in like, like being able to shoot shoot a load of cum across the room oh. at a voracious speed. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's what I'm thinking, like bottled, bottled up. up. Are you guys saying the same thing or is yeah. it just me being weird? No, I that's thought about true. that immediately. Yeah, really? bottled up. It's like it just hits the ceiling. Yeah. yeah, does it? Is there ever like an end to the velocity if you keep it held in there? Like, oh, if it's bottled up, it's coming out. <laughs> <laughs> Whether you want it to or not. Yeah, like mm -hmm. wet dreams. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Willingly or unwillingly, it's coming out some way. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, back to what I was gonna say is like I'm pretty terrible at expressing myself. You know, being able to like really speak up about like what is like bothering me and stuff. So reading this book has kind of it's it makes you go back and think like oh like maybe i'm not done working or working on this whatever it may be mm. and it's like shit maybe like i, I wish i wasn't so quiet you yeah. know i wish i did speak up for myself a lot more when i was younger because then maybe who knows maybe i wouldn't have back pain because that's like one of the things that can happen with what's called tms uh, tension myositis syndrome is it can manifests itself into a, a like a, an issue on your posterior muscle. So you hear about tension headaches and it's like, what the fuck is that? Like, oh, you're stressed at work and now you have a headache. Like, oh, he wants us to rub his butt now. Because it is traps, shoulders, mm -hmm. back, low back, and glutes is okay. where a lot we, of the tension. We hear you, make. Andrew. Okay, wink. <laughs> <laughs> I lost my train of thought, but 
uh that's what it was so when you first hear about this you're just like eh, this is kind of stupid like oh uh, because i got dumped a couple of years ago like now i have back pain or you know whatever it may be mm. but you know in the fitness industry we always talk about like the mind muscle connection like you know when we're doing a certain movement when we actually focus on and you know michael hearn has also said like oh i imagine the muscle fibers being broken down as i'm doing this movement yeah that all seems pretty legit right like we all kind of believe in that but then when it comes to this, it does seem kind of like a little bit out there, like to think like- Oh, the reverse, yeah. Yeah, exactly, right? Like there's some weird energy that's causing your, you know, chronic pain or whatever. But it's like, dude, like humans can heal ourselves pretty quickly on just about anything. But yet when something takes like 10 years or more, it's like, okay, dude, like what's really going on here? Like, it, you know, and, and the thing is like, what what's really interesting is like, when it comes to back pain, majority of back pain occurs between 30 and 60 years old. So if it's arthritis, if it's slipped discs, if it's things atrophying over time, you would think that that rate would go higher as you get older, but it doesn't because it's like almost impossible from like zero to twenties or whatever. And then 30 to 60, when you're the most responsible for like getting a better job, being responsible for a family, trying to like be a man, trying to like really do shit. That's when it happens the most because after that it drops off significantly. And it's like, what changes? It's like, oh, you, you retire. You stop giving a fuck about things. You stop having responsibility. You and felt I'll, like you found a purpose probably. Yes. And so it's like, okay, the what mind question? is controlling a lot more than we think. Can I see <laughs> something real quick? Um, mm -hmm. Do you know if it mentions anything? Cause like, I mean, I, this is just pure speculation, but you know, if a person's been living with a certain amount of discomfort, back pain or discomfort um would it be possible for in their el you know elderly years to report it as like oh, it's just normal it's not really oh, pain absolutely. you know what i mean you know, like, it, it definitely can but even with um back mechanic wow his name's just slipped my Stuart mind Rigo. Stuart Rigo. shit sorry dude <laughs> um in his book he's just like oh if you have back pain uh just know it's not going to be around forever because once you get into your 60s it just kind of goes away and it's just like wow very interesting it is <laughs> but it's i mean they have done studies and statistics and all the shits that you you know people want to point to when it comes to show proof and you can see the curve goes way down when it once you hit that age it's all really fascinating because here i am with back pain in my you know well, i've had it for a long time now since i was 20 but I, I don't know, man. I, I've tried a lot of things and, you know, this go to stuff is definitely helping. Like I, I ran with you guys a little bit ago uh -huh. and I felt fine. Like I feel fine right now. So it's obviously it's working. Yeah. That's been great to see the times that we've like, you know, worked out with Jason and a yeah. couple of times you and I did like bodybuilding stuff. Mm -hmm. You've been able to jump into those things mm -hmm. without a lot of, from what I've learned, not a lot of uh, like repercussions later on. Right? Yeah, no, everything's been doing great. Yeah. But it would be interesting to like tap into the, cause like I've never talked to like a therapist or anything like that, but something I definitely want to look into because like, you know, and see when you were saying like you have your like group of friends, like where you guys are like just a bunch of dudes talking about relationships or whatever it may be. don't have that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I have, I've got you guys, I have my wife, but like, I don't have really anybody else that I'm going to like really <laughs> open up to and, you know, be like whatever's bothering me or something like that. Mm. But it's just really fascinating reading this book. Um, it's unfortunate that he passed away in 2017 because mm. I would like to talk to this guy. You know, yeah, what was oh. that book uh, that you were it's, saying that uh, JL recommended to us, JL Holdworth? The Body Keeps Score. Yeah. There's and, that one. And then the one I'm reading is by John Sarno, just literally just called Healing Back Pain. Mm. Yeah, and then JL talked a lot about that kind of stuff, how... I uh, remember he picked out my cousin, like when he was talking about all this stuff and he's like, you know, why did your cousin Steven, you know, why is he, why is he standing in the corner? And Steven's like, yeah, I want well, I just, I didn't want to be in the way. And he's like, you probably do that in other areas of your life. And he does, like he is a servant to his like children, to his wife, to his family. Like that's first and foremost. And let me be, let me get out of the way, you know, but then what happens, then you lose control of your health and you lose control of yourself a little bit because you're putting everybody else first, which is amazing and that's admirable and that's what a dad should do, uh, but not to the detriment of like, you know, putting yourself on the back burner. So there's definitely a connection between, 
you know, how we feel physically and the way that we act mentally and the way that we act physically, uh, the way that you walk into a room, the way that you present yourself um, to other people. Uh, you know, I think having certain injuries or certain tightness is going to play into your psyche a ton on what it is you're going to do and how you're going to manage something. I mean, now if we're talking about like something high level, like you're going to like fight somebody, um, well, then all that stuff will be exposed very quickly if you're going against an opponent that really knows what they're doing and they're really proficient at what they're doing. We use that example when we were uh, on the podcast with JL. We we're talking about like jumping over a couch. How Ensema like wouldn't even think twice. He wouldn't ask what. He would probably just be like, that sounds like a cool challenge. And boom, he'd pop over the couch. And I would kind of think about it quite a bit. And I would be like, man, I'm pretty concerned about how I'm going to land from that. I'm fairly confident. I think I can launch myself over. Mm -hmm. And Andrew might not even participate, which I'm sure Andrew's plenty capable of because we've seen he's very athletic. But he might not even participate because you're like, I don't know what the cost of that is. I might mm -hmm. fuck up my back. Mm -hmm. So it definitely controls the physical and mental. They they work uh, together immensely. I don't know so much about like you know holding something in a particular area. That's a really interesting thing. But I'm definitely not against it. I'm open to that. That could be a huge possibility. I'm curious for you. Have you noticed um, your because you're 44, right? Yep, 45. 45. Okay. Have you noticed any type of change in your demeanor, the way you go about things as you started running more and unlocking things in your body? Have you started acting differently anywhere else or not really? That's an interesting question. I don't really know. Hmm. I think that I'm like happier, but I've been pretty happy as well. But I feel like because I can, uh, I guess this is a weird way to word it because I can cover more ground. Mm -hmm. I can see more of like, I can see more stuff in a shorter period of time, like have more experiences. And I didn't even thought about any of this, but I can have more experiences and more pictures and more <clears throat> uh, like surveillance of shit around me Yeah, faster. Yeah. So like I, I go and run like the Arboretum in Davis quite a bit. And I'm just like, this is fucking amazing. Mm -hmm. Like there's animals out there. There's mm -hmm. people out there. There's sunlight. There's wa a body of water. And yeah, I, I do feel like I, I feel like I actually even like move a little differently, run a little differently. I feel like sometimes my, I, I kind of, uh, normal go-to is to have my chest like neutral or down. Mm -hmm. But I notice like when I'm running lately, it's more up and I'm more like kind of looking at everything, looking up and looking around and being appreciative of what's around me. So I think I've noticed some of those changes, but I don't really know if I noticed other changes. Yeah. Because when I was thinking of what like what Andrew was just talking about, um, holding things in, right? When, when you think about an individual who maybe uh, they're not as active, uh, maybe they're really sedentary and they're, they're, everything is crouched in. They go into the car, they go home, they don't do much physical activity, they don't maybe even work out that much. It kind of makes some sense if there's not a physical uh, something to push against, resistance, mm -hmm that there's also going to be somewhat of a defensive outlook on things and being careful, which is a good thing. It's not bad to be careful. But you, you notice with a lot of people, some people who like take on CrossFit or they take on things that are challenging um, and even martial arts to an extent because now it's you versus an opponent or something like running where you, you kind of have to open your body up and open mm -hmm. yourself up. It would allow the mind to be a little bit more offensive about things. I noticed that with myself because... As an individual, I don't, uh, as far as, it was funny, we were talking about conflict earlier, right? Uh, I don't, uh, I'm, I'm fairly conflict averse unless it's conflict that needs to happen. So it doesn't mean like, I won't avoid a conflict if it's necessary, but if it's unnecessary conflict, I'm just not about it. Like I just don't do, I don't do that. But um, I noticed a change in myself in terms of the way I go about, uh, I guess, dealing with people after I started doing jujitsu, it's like, I noticed that I was, I wasn't seeking conflict, but I was not, whereas I used to maybe be somewhat fearful of, and when I say conflict, I don't mean physical conflict with another person. I more so mean like conflicting ideas and going at it with somebody when it comes to a difference in opinion or a different idea or something I don't think is right. I found that I am much more I, I'm, I'm not afraid about going in or, or differing in conflict with somebody close to me or somebody I may disagree with nowadays versus 
earlier. Maybe it's just development. I think it's in your early twenties yeah. or whatever. But <clears throat> I think it's a big part of maturity. Yeah. 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 Like I'm, I'm, I'm not as defensive on that, and mm-hmm. as I used to be. I, I don't, I don't mind conflicting with somebody. But I did notice that shift after doing some martial arts for a few years. So I think that there is a big link between what somebody is willing to try and do physically with the way that they act outside of that. I agree, and I think that sometimes. Uh, Sometimes we get into the habit of like feeling like we have to defend so much stuff that we say mm. rather than being more on like the offensive. Like I, like when I hear someone talk and they start to say things that conflict with me, I start to think like, I kind of almost am curious on like under what circumstances I would agree with it mm. rather than sitting there thinking like, I really disagree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I'm besmirched. <laughs> <laughs> besmirched. <laughs> you know, like rather than kind of thinking of, sometimes I'll get moved a little bit because I'll be like, I don't, that I don't agree with that, you know, I, but then I'll kind of think about it more and I'm like, yeah, I wonder, I wonder what made this person start to adopt that belief. Mm-hmm. And something that I've adopted that I think is really helpful is just putting a question mark after a statement, you know, and instead of having that period behind it, use a question mark. My back hurts, question mark. Instead of saying, my back hurts, period. Yeah. Now it's like, can we change the period to at least a comma so that we can or dot, finish dot, out? Dot. <laughs> yeah, or dot, 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 or a question mark. So like, why does my back hurt? Um. And then you can start to kind of think about like, what are these things? Is there something in your history in SEMA with your mother or a role model in your life where they uh, maybe taught you about problem solving? Like rather than, because uh, your mother was, she, she wouldn't, she wasn't tolerant of like negative, no. negative talk. But no. did she kind of, like if you said something, did she somehow show you in some way that, uh, maybe everything is kind of like a problem situation or was it like leading by example and being positive? No, no. She, she showed that number one, my mom was a civil engineer. So like (laughs) when it came to solving problems, there was like, she, she was a very mathematical person that way. That's why she had me do math stuff ever since I was super young. But, um, I never, yeah, because number one, her leading by example, number two, her exposing me to a lot of things really early on. And then me seeing a lot of wins early. So, I mean, academically, she exposed me to a lot of stuff early on, which gave me wins, which gave me an understanding of, oh, if I just want to learn something, it's not going to be hard to learn. Sports, mm-hmm. same deal. She exposed me to certain sports early. Um, and because progression over time, I was like, oh, the physical aspect of things, I can get the hang of anything physically if I just do it and practice. Mm-hmm. That's why like, I, I looked back at my childhood one day and I was, I was actually talking to my girl about it. I was like... Huh, that's like I had soccer practice almost every day of the week and my weekends I always had soccer games. I can't remember a weekend that I didn't have a soccer game that I was playing in or something, right? That was a very odd childhood when I look at it and when I talk to other friends about their childhoods. Like I wasn't going to like my friends' houses and doing stuff like that often. I was playing sports all the fucking time and the piano and whatever and, else right? yeah and the piano and whatever else so like it was just this she just exposed me to a lot of things um which just gave me this idea that well whatever i really want to do i i might as well just give it a shot do you recall like not wanting to do those things or were you well yeah when she gave me the decision in the high school she was like okay you know what if you don't want to play the piano anymore if you don't want to play your instruments you don't have to i made the dumb, the dumb decision of like stopping <laughs> when i look back at that i'm like i should have kept it but she gave me that decision when i when i got into high school so that way you had a little bit more time maybe social with friends kind of thing yeah. rather than just being stuck in soccer all the time. But soccer is year round anyway, right? Soccer is year round. That, that soccer was social enough. Like we traveled the yeah. U S so we'd be at hotels together. We'd, my soccer teammates were like my main friends. I had friends at school or whatever, but my team was like, those are my homies. You know what I mean? Even though we all went to different schools too. Mm. So um, because of that, it's like, uh, that's why I think the athletic aspect of things has been so beneficial for me because I look back at things, you know, we were talking about holding things in. Um, I'm definitely somebody who, you know, and especially I've talked about like my last relationship, I kept a lot of things to myself because I knew if I said certain things, mm. there'd be absolute blow up of conflict. You know, you're walking on eggshells. So what did I do? I just went to the gym. <laughs> like that's, that's been my thing. And I think that was beneficial for me because 
if I, if I didn't have that habit, my, I think that I would have just either held things into my body or I would have blown up. <laughs> right. But I had somewhere to let all the aggression go, which was the gym. And I mean, I never took it out of my jujitsu classmates, but after exercise, you always, or I personally know the feeling of just feeling tired and good and everything's okay. Right. And if I didn't have that, I think mentally I would have been in a much different place, especially with how fucking horrible my last relationship was. Yeah. When somebody around me gets really angry, it actually kind of draws me in a lot more. Like I'm not yeah. really, I mean, I might think if someone's pretty frustrated, I might think like, uh, is there an opportunity for me to assist or help in this situation? And if there's really not, someone's just venting, I just won't react to it hardly at all. Cause I'm like, mm -hmm. I don't think that deserves any attention. You know, if someone's being kind of like a little bit irrational and then maybe if there's an opportunity, maybe later on I'll, I'll talk, but uh, that stuff usually draws me in. That's from the time I was like, a little kid. I remember my parents would argue, like nothing crazy, but they'd get into disputes here and there. <clears throat> and I just remember like kind of closing my door to my room being like, I'd rather just kind of like clo close in rather than like, you know, I guess open up or rather like, let me, li let me listen in on this conflict. I was like, no, 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 I don't even want to, I don't even want to hear it. So mm -hmm. that's something I've done from the time I was young, like where you kind of <clears throat> bottle up this, uh, kind of negative thing that's going around you or even just close yourself off to it completely. Has that played out at all as an adult in a negative way? No, I think it's, uh, well, at least not that I know of. I don't think it's been negative. I think it's been fairly positive. Mm. Um, but do you think also, like to add on to that, played out on an adult in a negative way, but do you think also having physical activity, has that changed the way you deal with, do you think that you would have been Mm -hmm. You would have handled things differently if you never, if you didn't have that. Cause like I, I look at it and I'm just like, damn, like, yeah, there were times where I just like did hold something else. I was like, it's not a good idea to talk about this, mm -hmm. but I always had a way to let that energy out. Yeah. And I think a lot of men, especially, uh, we have a tendency of holding things in, but if you don't have an out, like you hear about dudes that get like, mm -mm, you know, mm -hmm. like, like <laughs> they find a way to let it out. And sometimes <laughs> that is not the best way to let it out. Well, I was telling our buddy, Graham Tuttle, um, you know, how like the second that he met me and the second that he met you, he like mentioned something weird about my shoes and he like kind of dug in on you on something. I don't remember yeah. what it was, but neither one of us cared at all. We gave it, we gave it, we gave it zero attention. You didn't even, I can't even remember what he said to you, but he said something to you where I was like, oh, that's kind of interesting. Like, it's like not the first thing I'd say to Encima, like with his size and <laughs> The different things I, I know that he can do. I'm like, oh, not the first place. Not that you would do anything, <laughs> but I was also like, that was not the first place I'd go with him. But he did the same thing to me. And I was just thinking like, those are the two people he can do that to very easily. Cause like, we don't fucking care. Yeah. Mm. And it's because we're, we're very confident. I think like I'm, I'm confident in the things that I've done. I'm confident in the things that I'm doing. I feel really comfortable about it. So it would be really rare for someone to be able to say anything that's going to really me for me to be like what'd you say you know or like or to say fuck you back or whatever yeah, yeah but yeah. i am thinking that partially <laughs> i am thinking like fuck you motherfucker i actually i actually think that a lot about everybody like when i see when i see like something new like yeah. it could be the knees over toes guy like it's a knee jerk fuck you <laughs> yeah it's like a knee jerk reaction like fuck you who's this new guy who's this guy trying to show me this thing like i've been yeah. around a long time i know better <laughs> Just because I've been around long as if that means anything. Mm -hmm. It doesn't actually really mean anything. Yeah. Um, but that is kind of my first uh, knee-jerk reaction sometimes is like, hold on, let me get a better view of this. Let me back up a little bit. Is this guy full of shit or is there some validity to this? And I'm like, ah. And, and it will kind of sometimes annoy me if it goes against my current beliefs. Uh -huh. But the guy is partially right. I'm like, damn it, this guy's partially right. And then I start to like look into it more. And then I started being open to just, hey, you know what? I think a lot of people are partially right. And a lot that means that you're partially right and partially wrong too. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, I need to really try to just open up when it comes to those things. But in terms of like saying stuff to people right away, it's, it's, I don't mind, I don't mind having fun with people and really fucking with people a lot. You guys see a lot of that. Mm -hmm. And I do that. <clears throat> usually just means I care about somebody mm -hmm. normally. Like that's my kind of way of like palling around with you, mm -hmm. I guess. Um, but yeah, most of the time I won't really 
you know, Bedros Koulian is a guy who's really like, that guy will tell you shit flat out. He looks like he's the guy who will mm-hmm. do that. But he, but again, you got to be like in his circle because uh, otherwise he's not going to waste his time on trying to correct you or, or steer you at all. Mm-hmm. Um, anybody that hasn't really seen some of his stuff, I mean, you should look, look him up. He's got amazing information, but that guy will tell you like it's it, like it is. Yeah. And then Simo, when you were talking about like not having an outlet to, you know, and that could lead to somebody like literally like fighting or whatever. Yeah. So that's kind of what, to my understanding, what TMS does is basically like you have all this like things bottled up. You have anger, you have anxiety, you have all these things. And some people do flip the fuck out and it turns to rage. So TMS jumps in and it's like, oh, we got to give this fucker something else to focus on. Mm. Your back hurts. So that way you're like, oh shit. Like then all the things that Mark was explaining about like, oh shit, I really got to think about what's going to happen if I try jumping over that couch. I got to think about what happens if I throw this chair through the window, you know, because then maybe someone's going to come after me. So it flip flops everything. And then it makes you, it forces you to think about your, your neck, your shoulders, your back or whatever posterior muscles and stuff that's going to be bugging you because it doesn't, your, your body naturally will do, will subconsciously do this to you so that way you don't, flip out and rage out so it's like oh okay well maybe i don't want to be known as a guy that like has a short temper maybe i can be somewhere in the middle yeah. <laughs> you know? so it's it's just really it's like i said it's interesting the shit that i'm learning yeah uh, and that, i mean that's why i think it's it's you know for any parents that are listening or for any young people and it, uh, it doesn't matter how old you are you can start if you haven't been exercising or doing something super physical you can always start to build a good connection with your body with physical activity because i'm i'm reading this i've actually just finished it it's called exercise by daniel lieberman um really fucking good book mm-hmm. but there's this part where he was like talking about literally how you know individuals who have anxiety and depression if they actually start exercising it takes a little while um but that can literally be reversed through exercise because he was talking about how for example everyone that talks about exercise is always saying oh when you exercise you always feel amazing afterwards just go hit the gym or go do some rowing you'll feel great afterwards but it takes a while for those receptors and we were just talking about this to flip like You know, you talk about how dopamine secretes after a bout of exercise, but people that exercise have more active dopamine receptors than people who don't. And it takes a while for those receptors to get turned on, like when individuals haven't been exercising for a while. Your body might be like, what's this? Like it might be new to it, right? Exactly. Meaning that you need to actually build a, 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 you need to build a winning streak of exercising for a while for your body to be like, oh, this is nice. Right. And it's, it's the same thing with serotonin. Um, serotonin is, it stops impulse control. It's what, like, you get it from one, like a hug type thing, right? Uh huh. You know, like uh, SSRIs are supposed to help individuals mm-hmm. who have low serotonin apparently, right? But with exercise, it also, people who exercise have more serotonin than people who don't. And it takes a while for that to build up. Same thing with all these feel-good hormones that people talk about. So if you're not someone who exercises often or you don't exercise and utilize physical activity as an outlet, let's say you don't even necessarily like it that much, it's going to take you a while for to get used for your body to get used to saying that, oh, this feels good. Mm-hmm. So you have kind of an uphill but if you can get through that, you, exercise can be something that allows you to deal with so many things because of how good it's going to make your body feel. It is it is something you need to do even if you don't want to do it. Small victories can make you feel amazing. So, like, I think that if even people just write stuff down, like, this is what I'm going to do today, and it doesn't necessarily have to be a lot more extra than what you already do. Mm-hmm. So, for example, if you already walk a little bit, if you already have that uh, in into your program, then you can write down like the two or three things that you wanted to get done today. But if you put a check mark at, uh, next to that at the end of the day, that's going to release dopamine. That's going to make you feel better about yourself because yeah. you actually followed through on the thing that you said it is that you wanted to do in the first place. And sometimes it could be as simple as like, getting a haircut like it could be easy like it doesn't have to but getting a haircut's inconvenient like cer- certain things are that there can be inconveniences and it's like why not put those things down as a list and if you're having a hard time with feeling good about yourself and feeling good about the things that you're doing if you can put an x or a check mark next to those things and feel good for them and you're already doing them mm. why not because i don't think we, i don't think we're paying attention 
I don't think we're paying attention to how much we're getting done in a day. You know, getting your kid off to school on time, picking your kid up from uh, volleyball practice or, you know, bringing your kids here, bringing your kids there, doing stuff for yourself, um, you know, picking up something from the store for your mother. Like there's all these little things that we do. We don't give ourselves credit for any of them. And just every day is just like blazing past us a million miles an hour. And you don't feel like you have time for anything. You barely have time to stop somebody and grab them by the damn shoulders and say, I love you. I really care about you. You know, it's like, how good does that feel? Andrew, your wife ever do that? Um, I mean, yeah, we're, we tell each other we love each other all the time, like several times a day. So every once in a while, my wife and I, I mean, we say we love each other. We say this, we say that every once in a while, we'll stop each other dead in the tracks and like, no, no, I, I mm. fucking love you. Like, mm -hmm. I, I love you. You're, you know, most amazing thing. Kissy poo, kissy poo. Mm -hmm. Finger in the, <laughs> finger in the butt. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> That's so cute. But like these things are, they're super important. And it's like, how good does that make you feel? Like, that's yeah. not that hard to do. Mm -hmm. I saw you do it with Kenny in the break room. He, he said, I'm, yeah, he said, I'm proud of you, dude. And you gave him a fist bump. Mm -hmm. And it's like, we're proud of Kenny because he's fucking jacked. <laughs> <laughs> you guys would be proud of Kenny too if you saw him. Oh my God. If Boy, man, Kenny is, Kenny, Kenny's got it, man. Yeah. They, they didn't kill Kenny. They didn't they kill Kenny. They can't. They tried to kill Kenny. They cannot. When God was cooking Kenny in a, in a pot, he was just like, let me give him a sprinkle of great genetics. Damn. Uh, big quads, small waist, big shoulders, beautiful face. Extra protein. Extra protein. <laughs> Let me just stir this up and boom. And he's never tired. Looks like a Piedmontese bull, doesn't he? He does. He does. Looks like a Piedmontese bull. Kenny can do anything. He'd be 96.4 if he was ground beef. Absolutely 96.4. And yeah. grass fed, grass yeah. finished. But he would be like <laughs> just bricks of, gra of ground beef though. Cause he, he wouldn't, you can't, can't. You're not going to chisel away at that thing. No, no, no. no. Uh, mm -hmm. What's Kenny's IG? Do you guys need to follow I Kenny? Know. I'm, I'm gonna find it real quick. I'm gonna find that shit, guys. Go follow Kenny because Kenny, Kenny's about. I to don't do know what's going Kenny's on with his shoulders. shoulders. Me neither, man. <laughs> Is that healthy? This kid's getting wider. <laughs> Kenny underscore Williams underscore underscore. Go He's follow fix this that. dude. Yeah, he does. <laughs> 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 but right now, that's his social. Yeah, dog, Matt, Mark, look at this shit. Let me see. I probably can't pull, pull up his yeah. back double buy. He has a back double buy on his IG page in in, in a pair of shorts, and he's just so bulbous. So Kenny he looks incredible. Underscore Williams underscore underscore. He's got good calves too. Yeah, he's, he has no missing links, man. Oh, crazy! My. Are you talking about this one? I'm talking about that one. Yeah, guys, be like Kenny, okay? <laughs> be jacked what like Kenny. That? What the fuck? What is that? What are those delts, dude? Yo. Yeah. How old is he again? 20. 20 years old. <laughs> so just give up? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What did he deadlift that one day? Like 585 for like 12 reps or something like that, yeah. right? Yeah. He did a, cr a disgusting amount of reps. Let's see if it's on here. Man. That's gross. It's, it's wild, man. I, like I always see, like I'll, I'll come to the to gym to train at like some random time and lo and behold, Kenny's car is here. Like Kenny is, Kenny has been putting in fucking mm -hmm. work. You know what I mean? Been putting in fucking work. He loves it. He does. But man, I like. That's why I think it's like just it's so oh, necessary. Thick. Yeah, it makes no sense. It makes no fucking sense. But it's, it's just so necessary to find. It doesn't have to be just the gym. If you find that it's hard to be consistent with mm -hmm. just the gym, Good find <laughs> find multiple physical outlets that'll allow mm -hmm. you to that allow you to do something yeah. like Kenny you, was a baseball player previously baseball player and he'll still do things with that mm -hmm. you know what i mean like you run mm -hmm. you lift <laughs> you you do a bunch of you do a bunch yeah. of things physically right i think that for like again i i just keep repeating myself at this point but with with all the physical outlets i have it is it's just allowed me to be good up here because i'm able to I'm able to deal with that out there so i'm calm Mm -hmm. Right, and if I didn't have that, I would not be calm. I'd be a, I'd be a, I'd be a recluse, be an angry wretch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I think it makes you uh, can make you like uptight, uptight. It makes it a little easier to be like upset by stuff. Mm -hmm. But when you're getting that energy out every day, and then also like just pushing yourself on something, mm -hmm. it it's hard to really describe or to put in words. And I, you know, we just we talk about it constantly. But uh, when you push yourself past a certain limit and then you're able to do something that you weren't able to do before 
It is amazing. And I think like the the main point of some of the stuff that I share and some of the stuff we share on this podcast is I don't really care that much to change you. I don't really want to necessarily change you. What I want you to do is to gain access to the stuff that you were able to do when you were a kid. Because mm, mm-hmm. every human being has a, has a right to those things. You used to be able to do them. Yep. Everyone used to be able to do them. Everyone used to be able to throw a ball. Everyone used to be able to swing a bat. Everyone used to be able to jump. Everyone used to be able to sprint. Everyone used to be able to do just about everything. And I realize there's circumstances where we have uh, people that were unfortunately born with things that don't allow them to do those things. But in general, we we're all born with these amazing capacities that we built up from the time we were zero until we were like 10. Mm-hmm. And then shit got weird because he got stuffed in the shoes and stuffed in the desks and, and didn't move for a long time and maybe he didn't play sports and so on. And then things got unraveled from there. But we used to have it. Yeah. How do we get it back? We get it back by doing stuff. You get it back by starting with a walk. You get it back by starting with push-ups. You get it back by doing some body weight squats. You get it back by hitting the gym, by being consistent, by managing your diet a little bit. Because if your diet is way out of whack, like if somebody, if somebody never lifted, if they never lifted before, but they just also never overeat, overeaten in their life, just very, or very rarely uh, would overeat, and they manage their body weight, they can walk into a gym at 20 years old and probably still perform a couple pull-ups. Mm. But if you're walking into the gym the first time and you're 20 years old and you're 300 pounds, those pull-ups are taken away from you. Yeah. Some of the access and some of the things that you would love to be able to do they're taken away from you. So now you have a steeper hill to climb. So somebody might think the way Andrew is feeding his child, they might think, oh man, that's too strict. That's too, no, it's the perfect thing to get him set up for the rest of his life so that he doesn't lose access to these things. Mm-hmm. We need to have access to these things. They, they are there for a reason. Our body is really vibrant. Our body can do really amazing things. The human body is made and designed to work vigorously, not just to work, but to work fucking hard and to work intensely. So a lot of us aren't digging ditches and moving shit around as much as we used to. So you have to find some other way of moving around intensely. You know, a funny thing about vigorous exercise, and this is another thing that you got to think about, especially if you're just starting, let this be something that like motivates you that it's going to feel good over time. Endorphins specifically release after usually for most people, 20 minutes of vigorous Mm -hmm. exercise you know what i mean so like that means that if you're just getting into it or you you don't have the ability right now to do things that like you know to to really push because you haven't been give yourself the time because as you get if you as you do it more you wonder why why are these people that exercise so much so fucking crazy about it (laughs) it's because it feels really fucking good when you're when you're into a good vigorous session but if you don't have the capacity yet to do that you're not even gonna feel it yet so it's like that's something to look forward to, like a vigorous session of jujitsu or for you running like halfway through your run, you're probably like, ooh, like it's hard to breathe a little bit, but this feels good. Yeah, like, absolutely. You know, you just feel like you're flying. It, it's it's it, just have that be something that if you haven't been doing this or this hasn't been a part of your lifestyle, understand. And it sounds so fucking cliche. It will get better. It really will. That's why I've been digging the cold plunge. So I did it for. So this is now eight days in a row but uh-huh. like you know i did it for my first week and every time i you know took the cover off I'm like ah, this is stupid i shouldn't do this pacing <laughs> yeah you try to breathe like, and i'm like no now i'm getting too warmed up because then when i touch it, it's gonna be even colder don't do that and every single time it's just like dude just fucking get in just get in just get in just get in like no no, no just get in okay i get in and then i plop right down as fast as i can dunk my head as fast as i can it, and it sucks. It it sucks. Okay, <laughs> it, it fucking sucks. Um, does it feel awesome after a little bit? Yes. And then when you get out and you're just you have the biggest win ever. And it's like when it comes to is it's not vigorous, but it is. Uh, it's very difficult because mm-hmm. it's like I'm comfortable. I can go get under the you know the warm shower right now. I don't need to do this really difficult thing. Mm-hmm. But then you do it, and it's just like fuck yeah. Like how many other people are going to be doing this? Not very many. Yeah. You know, and I know my temperature is not even as cold as the thing can get, but it's still cold as hell. And like, I, you know, I shiver the whole time. Yeah. 
but dude, when I get out of that thing, like I am in the best mood ever. I like, think it's going to be so fun when Aurelia starts cold plunging with you. I You're going to have a Russian son. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> He's going to be so <laughs> hardcore. A Russian son that can speak Spanish. You know, it's <laughs> interesting too because kids don't care that much about the water being cold. No, like, he, obviously they might care about it being that cold, but they don't care that much. Like uh, my nephews, when we go to Bodega, the water's fucking cold. cold. You guys mm-hmm. all been there. It is very, very cold, but they don't care. They'll mm-hmm. go in there and play for hours. Yeah. So when I'm when I'm in there and he's like awake and like, you know, out and about, Stephanie will bring him and he'll like touch the water and he thinks it's fun. Like he'll splash it. He, it's not like a, oh, that's cold. <laughs> you know, obviously, you know, if, if we were to dunk him all the way in, he <laughs> would be very uncomfortable and we're not going to do that. But you're yeah, right. Like he, he doesn't care. I remember Jasmine when she was like, you know, five years old, she jumped in the Pacific ocean too. And I'm just like, Oh my God, it's so cold in there. And then now she's like, like, Hey, right. are you, you going to jump in the water? Like you did when you were a kid? She's like, no, you're crazy. I'm like, right. you did it. <laughs> right. Cause right, yeah, you don't care. But man, getting out of that cold plunge and, and you know, I, I posted on my IG and people were like, you couldn't pay me to do that. And I'm like, go back a few months and I would have said the exact same thing. Yeah. Like it is uncomfortable for me because somebody who's always cold and look like we started the show talking about how I wanted to take a sweater and the sun was out, <laughs> but I was cold. So I'm like, I'm going to take the sweater and then, uh, you know, <laughs> what happened happened. Rained. We don't have to talk about it again, but <laughs> so I would definitely never be the person that would be willingly, that would be willing to jump in an ice bath. Mm. But here I am doing it every day and, you know, it's like every time I get out, I'm just like, oh my God, this is amazing. Like, I, I mean, in that moment, I'm excited to do, to do it again. Mm-hmm. In 24 hours, I'm just pacing again, just like, oh, here we go. But it's like, like uh, I, remember, I can't remember, somebody said it, it was on like a radio show that like they would do like the cold showers. Mm-hmm. Like every time you do it, it, it develops a toughness groove in your brain. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, oh, that sounds good. And so like when I get asked, like, why are you doing that? I'm like, I'm building resilience. Like I do a lot of easy shit. Like my job's fucking amazing, but like we talk, we, you know, this, I'm not like having to lay bricks and I'm not having to like, you know, do some really rigorous fucking job. I'm like, I have it really easy. I'm like, this is something that's going to build some resilience, you know, and fucking make me a man. <laughs> Here's something for people that haven't gotten a cold plunge yet, but you need to get one. We'll tell you how to get one in a minute. But for people that don't have one yet, just in the morning, just walk outside and walk in the grass. It'll be a little cold out, most likely, first thing in the morning. Get some sunlight in your eyes. Be out there for three to five minutes. That's a really simple ask. Like, that's way easier than getting into a cold plunge. But the grass is going to feel cold. It might be a little cold out there. Mm-hmm. Don't worry about your neighbors. Walk out in your underwear. Mm-hmm. It's your property. It's your mm-hmm. lawn. Be out there. Let it all hang out, so yeah. to speak. <laughs> And, uh, <laughs> no one's not seen a naked body. Yeah, no, I just should just should have seen the, naked body. At they're this point. so behind. They're running <laughs> late. You know, they're not going to be able to pay attention to what you got going what on. Uh oh, uh, dog. I'm gonna tell you after this. I feel. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you. I keep, 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 keep. I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> anyway, that's a simple Fuck. thing that you can do, and like exposing yourself to cold, exposing yourself to heat. These are all like little things that you can do to help kind of amplify and and uh, to make yourself a little stronger on the inside. I know that the episode was mainly about like bottling things up, Mm -hmm. but everything kind of comes back to this idea of like being able to exercise and having a strong capacity. The stronger your capacity is, the the harder it should be to move you uh, one direction or another with your equanimity, which is just kind of having a, I guess I'd say like a bandwidth for your temperament. Like it should be able to be moved up and down a little bit without you overreacting. Yeah. No, that's very well said because after I got out of, and this is again, like there's obviously many physical benefits to jumping into a cold plunge. But the thing that put me over the edge after we had Ryan Dewey on was like talking about like all the mental side of things. So like that's, that's my SSRI. That's my freaking, Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's my mushrooms. That's like all my happiness is inside this cold ass bucket, you know, Mm -hmm. or cold ass tub. But I got out of the the cold plunge and I was like, fuck, like I'm shivering, right? I'm still cold and, you know, flexing everything, trying to get warm. And then my phone rings and it is a very stressful phone call to take first thing in the morning. Uh. And so I'm like, fuck, like, all right pick it up and of course it wasn't like great news so it's like okay work through it all you know we figured it all out and everything was fine but 
that's when I was just like, wow, like that seemed like it was absolutely nothing because I just got out of this really hard thing. And it's mm-hmm. not as simple as that, as being like, like uh, you know, like it, it's not as simple as like, that's really hard. That makes this seem really easy. It's just like, it's building that mental toughness because I have to do some shit that I don't want to really do. <laughs> and and I know I'm not really like selling, you know, a cold plunge very well by saying like, I don't want to do it. Oh yeah. But it it is every single time it, it doesn't get easier. Every single time I'm looking, staring down at that thing, watching the jets and the bubbles go. And I'm just like, here we go again. And I do it. And then, like I said, while I'm in it, I'm just like, nobody can take this away from me. Like I fuck, I did this. Mm -hmm. I started off the day with the biggest win that I could ever imagine. And then I get out of it and I'm just like, I feel like a million bucks. Like it is one of the best feelings ever. And when it comes to bottling things up or whatever, and like having that release, that's kind of it for me, like really early in the morning. And mm-hmm. then now all of a sudden my like, uh, you know, the bottle's empty, but now the bottle got bigger because I can also mm-hmm. now take some more shit, you know, yeah. and I'm not going to explode and it's not going to turn into neck pain or something else. I'm going to mention something, but how can people get it? How can people save some money? Oh out? yeah, absolutely. Sorry. Uh, so you guys can head over to the cold Um, I got to put links down in the description below, but yeah, check out, they have the, uh, the regular one, they have the pro, they got the XL Pro, I'm sorry with all the names. The XL and stuff. is the bigger tub. Yeah, the Pro is the one that can get really hot, like a jacuzzi, ah. or it can get cold. Ours is the XL tub, so the XL mm. cup can't reach like 90 something degrees. Got it. Like the, the mm-hmm. Pro can, and then there's the normal tub. If you're over five foot ten, you can get the normal one, but the XL is just way more comfy. I'm mm-hmm. just saying. So just yeah, and it, I mean, the temperature wise, it gets down to 39 degrees. Uh, the I, tub looks great, by the way. It looks awesome. All of their tubs out there look fucking dumb. <laughs> I'm putting them all on blast. It looks stupid. Yeah, <laughs> this yeah. thing you looks awesome. It out. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah, you're right. It's like kind of like the centerpiece in my backyard now that my pool took shit. So and Mark, I, yours is inside of your house. Like, oh, that's for luxurious. for some of you guys. You can actually put it. It doesn't take out a lot of space. Mm-hmm. It's not extremely the large. The footprint is small. Footprint is small. It's weird. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty it, cool though. Yeah, it's great. No, it, it's freaking phenomenal. You're right, Mark. It looks, it looks amazing. It gets cold as hell. Sleek. And it's just, um, I am so grateful for it because like I never thought I would be doing this mm-hmm. and I am reaping so many amazing benefits within the first week. After I got out of it the first time, it was amazing. He mm-hmm. said the same thing about anal. Remember that? Yes, actually. I. Yeah. All right, fine. I'll admit it. I did say that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Gosh, you guys just put me on blast every time. It's okay. <laughs> So anyways, when you guys head to the coldplunge.com at checkout, enter promo code power project to save a shit ton of money. Um, it's again, I know I was like not doing a good job being like, Oh, this sucks. It's so cold, but like, I'm going to do it tomorrow. I'm going to do it the next day and the next day and the next day, because I can't be without these amazing benefits. So, uh, make sure you guys check them out. I'll link them down below in the description as well as the podcast show notes. But, you know, adding on to what you're saying, Andrew, I think like the cold plunging deliberate exercise, you know, at this moment in time, I know everybody has different lives, different levels of difficulty, but compared to 50 years ago, 100 years ago, (laughs) like things are generally for most people much easier than they used to be. And you, it's, it's a good idea to kind of seek difficulty and seek things that are uncomfortable because, um, just like fasting, right? Fasting is something that helped us get used to hunger so that now Hunger doesn't bother us. Like we're not. I'm not emotionally triggered by mm-hmm. being hungry. I don't get up my ass when I'm a little hungry. Mm-hmm. I'll just wait to eat. It's the same thing with stress. You know, literally going into a gold plunge in the morning is putting yourself under a deliberate stress. Going into the gym, I don't look at it as stress, but you are quite literally purposefully stressing out your body. Not just so you can feel great afterwards, but your body will repair and it'll get stronger and be able to handle that stress in a better way. So by doing these things, you can't deny that all of these difficult things will allow you to handle the mental stresses of life in a much probably safer, much healthier fashion than would be if you weren't seeking out difficult physical Mm. things. I love it. It's a great point. Let us know what you guys are doing that's a little stressful that you're doing, you know, doing to yourself. Cause I think it's important that these are things that are like voluntary. You are, uh, kind of f- trying to force growth yeah. and, um, they seem simple to us, but I think that maybe people just haven't adopted them and don't 
understand fully like what they can do. Remember what Nsema said earlier is uh, it can all take time. So you got to give it some time. You go on a walk, you go on a hike. You might think it sucks. Um, for a long time when I was walking, like my feet would bug me so much that it was like, it sucked here and there, you know? But I was like, this is an activity that I want to do. I want to get into it more, like give it a t- give it time. And it, it took time. Running took time. Everything you're going to do is going to take some time. Andrew, take us on out of here. Oh, Before I take it out of here, I want to mention something on taking time. I told you this earlier, Mark, but this morning I was like, okay, time to go on another run in these, uh, these Vibrams because I bought some Vibrams, mm-hmm. right? I ran for half a mile and my feet were like, fuck you, bro. And I was just like, God, this sucks. I just <laughs> stopped turned back and walked home. Like it, I wouldn't say it was a win. I'm happy that I got out there, but at the end of the day, I just was like, nah. And I walked home. So uh, like, I know it's going to take me time to get used to this shit, but I'm looking forward to a year from now when like running in those Vibrams and just running for miles on end feels fucking good, but it's going to take time. So mm-hmm. give it time. All right. Yeah, and just even walking like in vivos and stuff and in the, uh, the Vibrams. I think it's just a, another way to look at like an extra stressor. Yeah. Like I'm train. I'm training my feet as funny as it might sound. Andrew, take us on out of here. All righty. Sorry. I just got your pictures of uh, your cold plunge inside the house. That looks oh, God, so luxurious. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah. Thank you everybody for checking out today's episode. Uh, please drop us a comment down below and make sure you guys like today's video and subscribe. If you guys are not subscribed already, we would sincerely appreciate that. Mm. And uh, follow the podcast at MB Power Project on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. My Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter is at I am Andrew Z and Seema. Where can people find you? And Seema Inyang on Instagram and YouTube and Seema Inyang on TikTok and Twitter. Be sure to go into the description box and join the Discord. Mark, where can people find you? I want to be built like Kenny. He looks great. He's so yeah, he's so symmetrical. And he's handsome. handsome. I gotta need a time machine. Go back twenty years. He's handsome too. He's Fuck. too handsome. It's like God Kenny. It. Kenny. Kenny has it all. Kenny has it all. Maybe he'll at least let me work out with him. Maybe. How are his feet? But if, if, probably not. Yeah. Does he have messed up feet? Maybe. Nah, dude. No, actually, he has, he has good very, feet too. He has good feet. He was an athlete all his life. He's, Any woman that manages to get Kenny. Understand. Understand you got to get through us. He got a girlfriend? My boy is living his life. Oh, Oh, shit. You hear that, ladies? (laughs) Go, go follow my boy, Kenny. (laughs) 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 I'm going to make the ultimate bank shot right here. Uh, Let's go. Let's see if we can replicate it. It's uh, the fourth inning. Now the fourth quarter. Oh, so maybe I could change the camera. Oh, you're or, trying to get the. We'll, we'll put it on. Camera. Yeah, People it's gonna go know. right in there. It's gonna Let's be amazing. See. Hold on, let me. Look. Yeah, and okay. Seema's doubting my skills already. I can <laughs> tell. Sure I'm not doubting. I have full. I have full <laughs> faith and hope that you will do this. Warm up. <clears throat> there we go. All right. Whenever you're ready. Mark Curry. Oh, Let's there's get a it. kind of a kind of a click in there. You hear that? Uh, uh-uh, don't don't start making <laughs> excuses, bro. <laughs> All right, here we go. Ready? Oh, oh I was trying yeah, for the bank yeah, shot yeah. and it missed. Andrew, can you pass that to me? I want to bank this real quick and show oh, yeah, them how, yeah. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Show them how Chef mm-hmm. and Seema does it. Mm-hmm. Pass it over here. Oh, oh, oh. oh. watch this. Let's see. He's going for the bank, going for the rim job. I mean, the bank shot. Oh, oh that God. was close. Damn. All right, that's it. I'm at Mark Smelly Bell. Strength is never a weakness. <laughs> weakness is never strength. Catch you guys later. Bye. <laughs>